Welcome. Today, the Senate debates a measure that would allow consumers to buy low-cost drugs from other countries like Canada, for instance. Last year, Senator Barack Obama supported such a measure. But President Obama needs the pharmaceutical industry to get his health care bill through Congress. And now he is against While Capitol Hill's health care reform effort has gone through many changes, the White House says it will lower costs. But many Americans could end up paying a lot more for their health care. So how much will this latest plan cost, as proposed? And might there be other unintended consequences of this legislation? Let's talk about it with Fox News contributor Kirsten Powers. She writes a column for the New York Post. Tevi Troy is a former deputy secretary of health and human services, now a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. Welcome to the program, Tevi. Let's take Thanks, a, let's let's get a quick response from you first of all. I mean, I know that the details are always in flux, but this new idea of using exchanges to let people buy into Medicare, for instance, what do you see is happening to the cost of health care through that proposal? Well, I think the uh, the exchange idea with Medicare is only one small part of a larger bill that's going to cost a lot of money and is going to uh, raise the deficit down the road. Uh, but I think this particular idea is really just about the politics. It's about making sure that the Democrats have the 60 votes they need to get this bill passed. Um, the Washington Post this morning used the phrase you used about unintended consequences. It's not clear how much this is going to cost down the road because the people who buy in are likely to be people who are sicker and will need more medical care. So I think the costs will get larger and larger in the years to come. Well, and, and Kirsten, I mean, the, the math looks great on paper, I suppose, because you allow people, the, the plan is you would allow people in their 50s and 60s to buy into Medicare, but Medicare pays doctors and hospitals less than other insurance companies. So if you have this, uh, you have this swarm of people buying in and demanding services that hospitals and doctors aren't going to get paid as much for, is that going to work in the end? I mean, I think it can work, and I think you know. I, I think this all comes down to whether you think this is a moral imperative, or whether you think that it, it doesn't matter that there are people who don't have insurance. And, and at the end of the day, I think it will end up costing us more money, at least in the short run. I think the, the idea is that over the the long run, that, that costs will come down. But in the short run, it is going to, you know, it is going to raise costs. And I would rather have those people insured and raise costs than to, to leave them uninsured. And the, the people who would be buying into that exchange. Are people who are between certain ages, um, you know, 55 and 64, I think, um, that would uh, buy into that. They would be paying for it, so it wouldn't be um, exactly like Medicare because it wouldn't be free. Um, but you know, you, you raise an important point, I think, that uh, that the prices would be lower. But I think it's better that they're insured than left uninsured. Well, and you know, the 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 process, I guess, Tevi has a five and a half percent, roughly, surtax on people who make more than half a million a year and families who make more than a million a year. Also, you start taxing some of those so-called Cadillac insurance plans. Uh, there are going to be some small business owners and so forth who make a pretty good living who are going to get hit by this, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the taxes are, are going to go up, and Kirsten's right that the costs are, are going to go up. There was just an analysis done by um, Senator Grassley's staff that Keith Hennessy blogged about, where he said that there's going to be about 68 million middle class losers under the bill and only 17 million winners. That's a four to one loser to ratio, loser to winner ratio. Not good numbers, if you ask me. Yeah, so Kirsten, if, if I'm on the lower end of the economic scale and I'm not paying in to this system through, through new taxation, and, uh, you know, what's my motivation to live a healthy lifestyle, for instance, to, you know, give up smoking or whatever, if I know that I can go to the hospital anytime I want and the government's going to pay for it? I just don't think that that's what motivates people. I, you know, I, I don't think that pe people smoke because they want to smoke. They don't. I, I don't I don't think that that kind of stuff is going to motivate a person to be healthier or not healthy again I just I go back I really think that this you, you fall down on on either side of this debate whether you think this is a moral imperative and I would compare it to sort of um, you know spending money on Afghanistan or spending money on the Iraq war people who supported the Iraq war who thought that we need to do this because it's going to protect us didn't ever raise any issues about costs and 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 they still wouldn't raise any issues about costs they would say this is something we have to do regardless of how much it costs. That's my position on health care. So, and I think that that is the position of a lot of other people. I, I, I think it's unfortunate that we have to keep insisting that costs aren't going to go up because I do think they will go up in the short run. I think over the long run, it will be better for us um, economically. And I think that, that, you know, that's an argument that the economists and the Obama administration make. But you know, yes, taxes are going to go up. They're going to go up on a lot of people. Um, and, and I think that that's just going to be a price that we pay in order to have people insured. Kirsten Powers and Tevi Troy, thank, thank you. you.